Hey there, how are you? Happy Monday. What are you up to? It is lovely to see you and to connect with you on a Monday. You know, this is usually my time when I'm feeling all frisky <laughs> and fired up, mainly because, well, because I've gotten some rest and I've finally gotten over the jet lag. Yeah, that was so not fun. But uh, I'm here and I am ready to interact with you, my friends. What's going on in your world? What's good in your hood? I would love to hear about it. I'm gonna share this to my page so that the world knows that I am live. Hey, who is here with us? I get to see my live viewers swiping left. <laughs> uh, well, someone's disappeared, oh no. So let's see you guys. I wanted to kind of talk about family stuff. I know that's not necessarily what everybody wants to talk about, especially if um, your family has been full of drama. But I've found that for me, when my family didn't quite know what the heck I was doing with my life, I felt really isolated and really lonely. And I think depending on the way you grew up, that can be harder for some people than others. For me, it was, it was tricky, I'll be honest. It was, you know, most of us, myself included, want to feel like we can make our parents proud and all of that stuff. But I wasn't really 100% sure that my family was even going to, I don't know, accept me, especially my father. I mean, if you've heard about my story, then you know that a lot of what influenced me um, was both my mom and my dad, but a lot of what held me back from being my fully expressed artistic self was my dad's influence. And what's up, Michael in Denmark? How are you? And that was, that was, that was challenging because when I realized that not expressing my artistic self, um, when I realized that not doing that is what was leading to my depression, partially, I knew that something had to change. And if you saw my TED talk, if you've heard me talk about this before, you know that my depression and anxiety that I experienced, it got to a point where I didn't want to be on the planet anymore. I know that sounds bleak and hard to believe, but that's where I was. And I don't ever want to return there. And it was very funny because a very dear friend of mine, my friend Nidal, was actually um, really clued in. Nidal was my uh, chief operating officer at the wellness center that I had in the Silver Spring, Washington, D.C. area. And it was funny because when he noticed that I was getting like depressed and grumpy, <laughs> he asked me one day, like, are you singing? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I just noticed that when you sing, you're a little nicer and a little happier. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not. And he's like, well, you just need to take some time off from work and go home and sing. Play your piano, you know, do some singing stuff so that you're not so grumpy. And it's funny because it's, it was so obvious to him. Sorry, I'm just trying to... We don't have a lot of sun here in France today. It's uh, actually cloudy. It's not very often cloudy here, but it is right now. So I'm trying to get positioned so that you can see me. <laughs> um, what's up, Nino, Edward? Nice to have you guys here. So I just wonder how many of you have ever dealt with this challenge where you're trying to please so many people, especially your family, and they don't get you. And eventually you feel like you have to cut the ties with your family. Um, I know I can't be the only one out there because the majority of my clients have told me the same thing. 
And I was just talking to this lovely woman, Lorena, in Denmark, and we were talking about, you know, the same idea that sometimes, especially if you're on a spiritual path, or you, you just, you're very sensitive and you can pick up things from your environment, not necessarily just like me, being able to know things without being told. You know, I had precognitive dreams, psychic visions. Um, my mother, for example, told me that she could see spirits. My daughter <laughs> can see spirits and auras. But imagine that you tell your family about these things and they think that you're either weird or, I don't know, that you're crazy um, or that you're an embarrassment. So if you know anyone who's dealing with feeling like a misfit or an outsider in their family, would you please share this video so that they can know that they're not alone and that there's actually a community of loving spiritual people here? Um, I think you would find it helpful and they would find it helpful. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Ron. Yes, I have moved my beauty, wisdom, and grit, Ron, <laughs> to here, back home to the south of France. Salut, Brittany. I'm looking forward to talking to you soon, Britt. So, I don't know. Brittany, what about you? Like, you left North America and moved to France. How was your family um, with that change? Um, for me, if you can even imagine, so I've worked in t TV and film, right? Um, uh, yes, so Brittany, you say you've always felt like the black sheep in your family. I can totally agree. I wasn't for the first part of my life because I was the good girl. I did everything to like follow what my dad said, you know, uh, be because of uh, my parents' divorce. Um, everyone in my family reacted differently. My sisters and my brothers reacted totally differently. So my brother, Tony, with whom I grew up in the same household, he just did not respond well to my dad's very forceful and uh, tough on education thing. He was just like, look, I'm gonna play my guitar, be a rock and roller, and that's it. Whereas I, I was much younger, I still wanted to like get the attention and approval of my dad, so I was very good in school. And if I wanted to be in my plays and other things, I had to get good grades. So I did all of that. I followed all of those rules. I was the good girl. I was doing everything I could. But when I realized that I am an artist, there is no getting away from it. Um, I dealt with a lot of like self-loathing and self-hatred because one of the things that my dad said was, oh, artists, they're a dime a dozen. Hey, Morton, you've probably heard that, right? You're a musician, <laughs> musician and now f filmmaker. Hey, Jill. So we hear this as artists. Oh, artists are a dime a dozen. It's only one in a million that's going to make it. You need to get an education, get a real job, like real job. As if being a musician or an artist isn't a real job. But when you hear that so much as a kid, and then you find that this is who you really are, like I am an artist. It's what I am. I'm a creative type. And so if you hear that being an artist is bad, wrong, less than ideal, and you finally come to realize that that's who you are, you're like, I can't love myself. I know that sounds like, to me it sounds stupid coming out of my mouth because I'm like, this is just who I am. But I had that programming. And so when I finally realized after working in entertainment, I mean, I was lucky because going to medical school and being an artist, I got hired right off the bat with Discovery Channel. So working with this number one media company in the world allowed me to have my creative expression while still being a doctor. But as you all know the story, the brand of Dr. Andrea that I was portraying was lame, she was boring, um, and it was not sustainable because it was very one-dimensional. It wasn't fully allowing me to do all of it. And so when I finally realized I have to be me 100%, um, and of course I had my spiritual awakening when I left my body and you know was asking God to take my life, um, I saw that I could have a life 
in France. I mean, the vision that I got, that whether you call it a psychic vision or God was showing me the future, when I was in that spiritual state of oneness, I completely saw this vision of me walking along the Croisette, Brittany, you know it well, right there in Cannes, holding hands with the child, and I was healing. I saw in my vision that I was like a healer, healing with my hands, and I was singing professionally. And so for me to have that direct communication with the divine in this vision, I knew that it was, it was a part of my reality, and I didn't question it, even though it took a few years to like break away and finally move here. But when I did, no matter all the success, no matter all of my health knowledge and being here, raising my daughter in this little tiny French village where even at her school, like they have all what they call bio, which in America we call organic. Like it's a vegetarian school. My daughter's vegan, so that adds a layer. But healthy food, um, outdoors living, like complete beautiful gardens. It's like the healthiest lifestyle. And now, remember, I was just in America. And even when I was in California, where people are really oriented towards health and wellness, and we could get fresh food options, it's so much more expensive in America to eat well than it is here. And even with all of that I set up for my daughter when I moved here, do you know what my dad said once? He called me up and just blasted me. He was like, Ugh, I can't believe that you've moved my granddaughter over there and you're exposing her to that lifestyle. And, and I was like, wait, what, what lifestyle are you talking about? Like, it's healthy, organic, she's speaking multiple languages, all this stuff. Well, he had seen a picture of me um, at the Cannes Film Festival. You know, I'm a filmmaker, what? I go to big, beautiful parties with celebrities. And he saw me in this gorgeous dress, posing with one of my friends on the red carpet. And he, my daughter wasn't there. My daughter was at home with the sitter. I'm like, what connection? Anyway, somehow he thought, well, if you're over there in you know, the French version of Hollywood, on Cannes and Monaco and all of that, then it must not be good for my, my granddaughter. So I'm saying all of this to say, sometimes your family just ain't gonna get it. Not just because you're weird or different, but because it's not part of their paradigm. It is never gonna be part of my father's paradigm to fully get and understand me. Because I'm a unique creature <laughs> that has never existed on this planet before in this version, right? Like, fortunately for you all, I'm connecting with some beautiful souls around the world where you get me. I don't have to pretend, fake, filter, or, you know, even give disclaimers anymore. Like, there are more of us on the planet who get each other that we don't even need to worry about our families. Now I know, for some of you, that idea about being isolated or unplugging may be a tough one, so that's why I want to talk about it. So I'd love to hear from you uh, and what you've experienced. So scrolling up through the comments. So Morton, yes, you did hear that being a musician was like not the thing to do, right? So Brittany, you said when you moved to France, you were unconsciously running away from home. Mm -hmm. So you needed to forge your own path and reclaim your sense of self. And ironically, your relationship with your family is much better. Well, that's good. Hey, I, you know what they always say? You, you can try to run away and move from here or there, but you really can't escape yourself. Well, I believe, like you have experienced, Brittany, when you do break away from your kind of country of origin, you will find yourself. If you were running away from parts of you there, that you end up realizing they're still here. And that's kind of good that you wake up and realize this is who I am, this is who I want to be. And starting with that clean slate in a new country means, and Brittany, you're in branding, you know, we share that. It means you get to declare who you are, you know? You claim your brand identity when you move into a new space. But I want to talk about moving into a new space or being born again, <laughs> you know, a rebirth. 
Because whether you believe in astrology, numerology, or some sort of past life, current life, karma, and drama, there are periods of our life or cycles of our life where we really can wipe the slate clean, where you can die to the old. There is a, a dying of ego or a, you know, a passing away of your old identity as you step into a new version of yourself. Has anybody ever experienced that? I certainly did with that near-death experience. When I came out of that, that experience back into my body after seeing that vision, I, it was like being reborn, but not as a new person, as the original real me that I was intended to be in the first place. Have you had an experience like that? I wanna know. So Amel Kamal says, you heard that a lot so you heard a lot of people saying that you wanted to be a director and at the end you gave up. And you're a bored, sad dentist now. Hmm. I'm sorry. Well, find ways that you can direct now. Amel, I am actually connected to two wonderful dentists who, you know, it's not just the medical profession, in dentistry as well. People end up going down that path because it seems safe and secure and reputable and all that. But it's not too late. You can start doing some interesting direction stuff now. You don't have to be a bored, sad dentist. So get out that creativity. Very nice to have you here, Alexandra. You as well. So Jill, you said, since starting this path you're on, your dad has been an amazing support. Awesome. But at the same time, at the very beginning of your transformation and chasing your vision, asked you what your backup plan was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what my dad calls it? A lily pad. He's like, you need to be able to have that next lily pad. You know, it was like when I left Discovery Channel, he was like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, you do know I run a multi-million dollar business over here. Well, what, you know, what's that next lily pad? And fortunately, when I moved to Monaco, I started uh, doing reporting for Lux TV. You can't seem to get away from being a, a reporter and a editor. Um, you know, journalism's my thing. And so that was my next sort of lily pad. But once again, he was just like, there was nothing in my dad's consciousness that seemed stable about my, my world and my life. And he just can't please everybody. Yep. So Jill, yeah, you recognize that we are all connected. Yes, and I am just being the real me. So I don't know, for, for those of you that have signed up for my, um, my updates, if you go to andreapennington.com and get any one of my free eBooks, you'll see that you can, yeah, sign up and get a free eBook or an audiobook. And then I will email you. I don't spam you, just lovely emails. And today we featured you, Dr. Jill Stocker, the Juicy Hormone Doctor, because she's part of the Hormone Hacker Revolution. Jill, share your link in the, in the description. Because for people who, a lot of people who struggle with being fully self-expressed, what I noticed as a physician, and this is the one thing I'm kind of grateful for in being a doctor, is understanding how our physical well-being or dis-ease can really affect you from being your whole fully expressed, authentic, badass self. Hey, Camilla. So for example, I mean, if, you, if you're so busy worrying about your blood sugar because you've got type 2 diabetes, or you are so fatigued and tired in bed because you've got fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue or Lyme disease, it's pretty hard for you to kind of get out there and say, I'm going to have a kick-ass life and forget my family. I don't care if you guys don't get me. And hormones... You know, Jill is the expert in that. I gave up my anti-aging practice years ago. But one of the things I noticed with treating hormones and getting your hormones in check, especially after pregnancy, it's like, especially for women, if your hormones are out of whack, like your mind doesn't work, your mind is kind of like, you know, foggy, you don't think straight, you may have anxiety a little more than usual, or you may get tired 
and or have insomnia. I mean, night sweats, hot sweats, uh, depending on you know what your hormone issue is, whether it's thyroid or estrogen or low testosterone. But getting those things, including your blood sugar and your blood pressure, getting your weight in check, I never pushed getting your health in order just because being thin and active is what doctors tell you to do. No, I want you to be well because when this body, this vessel that brings your soul and your spirit into the world, when you're healthy and full of vitality, that's when you can live your most kick-ass life and that's when you actually have the mental energy and strength to tap into who you really are and to overcome the resistance, the inertia, uh, the fear of going against the grain, whether it's going against the grain of society or it's your family or it's your religion. Has anybody else had this experience where, yeah, you were just lucky if you could get up out of the bed, let alone trying to find the energy to go and remake your life? So Camilla, you say your, your, hormone, your hormones have a life of their own? Well then definitely click on Dr. Jill's link there and join the hormone hacker revolution. Because in addition to Jill, there are several other experts who are sharing insights on how to get your hormones in check and sometimes naturally. Because, uh, hey, I know not everybody wants to be on, sorry, my battery's dying. Not everybody wants to be on hormones, right? Nobody, not everybody wants to be on bioidentical hormones. If you've had a family history of breast cancer, that may not be the move for you. Can't not find my little mobile charger. <laughs> hey, Lorena, I was just mentioning you, not giving away any secrets. So many of you know that I'm in the midst of working on a book project. I really can't find this little charger box. Um, I digress. So I'm working on a book project called Time to Rise, and we are inviting people to share their stories, and um, I think Lorena is going to be joining us. <laughs> I'm so excited. And you know who else I'm excited about is um, Joanna Soares. I think I'm saying her name correctly. She is the first person joining our book project from Portugal. Ha oh, ha. So I'm like, so how cool is that? And as you, many of you who've been in this community have seen, my friend, Dr. Janet Anthony, who chimes in a lot on, on here, she's actually sharing her story in Time to Rise. Sorry for all the movement. I'm just trying to get plugged in so I don't run out of batteries. So I'm super excited. Let me plug in. Okay, and that's not even gonna reach. Brilliant. I need an extension cord. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Ah, here we go. So, no one else is chiming in? Nobody else has any other family drama? Am I the only one who's ever had a family that didn't 100% accept what you were doing and what you were up to in the world? Where is my long extension cord? I tell you guys, I'm really struggling today. Oh well, I guess I'll just sit in here and make it easy on myself. How about that? How about we go for the direction of ease and grace instead of making things hard on myself? Except I left my drink out there. So Jill says, you didn't realize how bad you felt until you felt better. With hormonal optimization being the diving board, allowing you to launch into other healing modalities, and you truly, truly started living your life, dot, 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 unfortunately on the iPhone, I don't get the full screen of whatever you've shared, but yeah, it is, it is kind of like that beautiful thing that when you get your hormones in check, when you get your health, even just like blood sugar things, when people um, in my program started getting their blood sugar normalized, not with any medications, but with just getting um, proper nutrition, finally, and moving their bodies, 
They couldn't believe how much better they felt and how much more, it's almost like the lights got turned on, you know? It's as if when your hormones are out of whack, it's as if your life exists on a dimmer switch. Like everything is just kind of dim and your energy isn't where you ideally want it to be. Does that make sense to anybody? So Sarah Ellis says, a family that didn't believe in what you did. You had an ex-husband who constantly told you to get a normal job. Mm. Yeah, I can see why he's an ex-husband, right? <sighs> yeah, I would, not, I would not be able to tolerate somebody who didn't understand and uh, support all of me in all of my weird woo-woo stuff. And Camilla, you say you're the black sheep in the family, but you've learned not to care anymore. I know it can be a tough, tough challenge. Was that hard for you, Camilla? You know, I was talking to somebody recently who said, you know, it's, it, you kind of go through a grieving process when you realize that some people you just gotta, you just gotta cut them off. And it's not necessarily in a mean way. It's just you get to a point where you recognize they're never gonna get you and you're not willing to be who they need you to be in order to be accepted, which in my case was either just downplaying or hiding parts of me, um, just keeping that quiet and private so that I wouldn't have to listen to those judgmental conversations. But there's a kind of freedom when you can finally say, you know what, this is my family of origin. Um, I honor them, my parents, for example, I can honor my parents for who they are, for having brought me to the world. <laughs> they are the vessel through which I came into the world, but from a perspective of who I really want to be, I, I don't owe them anything. Even though as children, sometimes we feel like we owe them. We've got to get that job and make them proud of us. Um, but yeah, I was talking to somebody about this just this weekend who's in the same position. It was like, wow. You know, you get to a certain age and you just realize this is my life. And as much as I hope that my family would get me and accept me and be there, if they're not supportive, if they're not positive, I don't mind a little, you know, constructive criticism and advice, but if you constantly bringing me down, you got to go. You know what I'm saying? Hello, Aaron. Welcome to the party. It's a Monday kind of dealing with family, black sheep, isolation kind of stuff. So that's just, that's just what was on my mind. Um, I think because as we're working on this book project, Time to Rise, um, it, it is like a, an affirmative process where you get to say, you know what world, it's my time. I've tried to play by everybody else's rules. I've done enough of trying to fit in and, you know, get in where you fit in, and I'm done. I'm done with that. Um, and that is not always an easy place for people. Uh, having been there myself, I know, but I can just tell you that the first time that I shared my um, truth, and of course, <laughs> I don't ever do things small. <laughs> I actually shared my truth on a TEDx stage. You know, um, I decided when I wanted to come back into the world, in the media world, that I wanted to come back as the real me, 100% me, non-apologetic me, so that I could live my truth in peace. Like that was just it. I didn't even know what was necessarily going to come. I just knew I had to share my truth, come clean, and, and reclaim my ability to do what I love, which is exploring spirituality, creating films, and communication through books, and internet, and retreats, and workshops. And I didn't know how that was going to look. I mean, there were parts of me that were scared and nervous. Um, I am grateful for those of you who've positively commented on my TED talk. 
I've also learned not to look at the comments because there's some people who thought it was not a very good presentation. But if you watch it, you can tell I'm kind of nervous. That's why it's so rehearsed. And I, I, my daughter was in the front row um, as I gave that TED Talk. And um, I was really nervous because I wasn't sure what the world would look like after being 100% honest. And the reason I wanted to do this book, Time to Rise, and invite other people to share is because of what it did for me. Now, not everybody needs to go out and do a TED Talk, but I also shared my story in a book called uh, Heart to Heart, The Path to Wellness. And this was also a group book um, with who Dee Martini and Bob Doyle from the movie The Secret. Um, and, and some other beautiful souls from around the world. And each of us shared these stories about how we, um, yeah, how we rose up from our various health challenges and got on our own path to wellness. And sharing my truth in that story was, again, one of those things where I was like, okay, I'm actually going to put it in black and white. white. It's out there in the world. And you know what? I wasn't greeted with people thinking that I was a weirdo, woo-woo, new-agey crackpot. I was greeted by people who said, oh my God, this really resonates with me because I've had that too. You know, the struggle with depression and feeling like I wasn't good enough and then having the spiritual awakening. Um, yeah, and so I wanted to give other people that opportunity and so that's why we're doing the book. That's why I'm grateful to have the people that are sharing. So far, we've got confirmed fabulous speakers, uh, writers like Darius Llewellyn Davies, uh, Dr. Janet Anthony, um, Solveig Thoranis Dottir. Okay, I got to work on my Icelandic. Um, you've probably already seen the, the video and stuff that I posted when I was in Iceland. And she's flying here on Friday, so it's going to be awesome. But we're sharing these great stories. And Joana Soares from Portugal, who's sharing her story. Um, I just met her last week and I was so inspired. She's this young, beautiful light who, you know, she's had her own journey. And it, I don't know, it inspires me. So I'm excited. So Camilla says, it, uh, within the last year, you've learned to accept it. The whole, you know, family thing. Because it made you not be you. Mm. You have always, the last 35 years, said and done things to please them, meaning your family, so you could feel part of them. Yeah, I know, I know. What's up, Melvin? It's been a long time since you've tuned into my Facebook Live. And Sunitra, how are you? I hope you've enjoyed your birthday celebrations over the weekends and whatnot. So, Camilla, good for you, honey. Um, and, uh, you know, I say this to every day when, when I'm on live with you guys, but connecting with people all around the world, you know, from Australia, New Zealand, Iceland, Scandinavia, with Denmark, Sweden, of course, all across the United States, and now the UK, and Spain, and Portugal, and France. It's like, it's really heartening for me, because I'm no longer alone, and you're no longer alone. We can be connected um, through technology, and yes, that might be a little artificial, and that's why we do retreats and workshops. So Camilla, I'm so excited that I'm going to see you in Denmark. And Lorena, I hope that you'll make it there as well. Um, I'll have to share the link. Um, what is it? Women's Empowerment Day um, is being hosted around the world. I mean, the United Nations has also uh, designated uh, November 19th, uh, Women's Economic Day. I've got it. W-E-D-D-D-K. Oh, gosh. I need to type that in there for you. Anyway, um, I'm the one of the keynote speakers for the Denmark version. Um, it will be happening all over the world, so you, my peeps in America can uh, definitely tune in. Sorry, I'm just going to pop the link in there for you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to see some of you in person. I'll see some of you this weekend here in Cannes for um, the Stories with Soul event that I'm hosting where I'm teaching people about storytelling and story writing and story speaking. That's this Saturday. Um, all the people who are in the Time to Rise book, 
um, are invited. Uh, it's part of the package to come to this training or to watch it online. And then I'll see some of you next month here in the south of France for the Roots of Purpose and in London for the Speak from the Heart speaker training that I'm doing on October 28th, 29th. And then yes, November, I will be with you celebrating my birthday in Denmark at the um, Women's Empowerment Day, Sunday, November 19th, and I'm excited. So what kind of people and stories am I looking for for the book, Camilla asks. I'm, I'm looking for people who have a personal story to share about how you have taken your life T twists and turns and ups and downs and you finally got to a point where you said mm, now is my time to rise it's we either that you've decided you're gonna rise up and be your authentic self or you're gonna start that business or you're gonna get out of that bad relationship time to rise is meant for people to share a story about how they've gone away from being locked in, confined, in a box, in conformity, in denial, and they've instead shifted to live their truth and to express their truth. So Time to Rise is a collection of speakers, authors, healers, light workers, anyone who, um, yeah, who wants to share how they've done it. Because, you know, I, I rant and rave about how I've done it. I try to connect you all with resources so that you can learn who you are and love who you are and live who you are. But I, I realize that if I bring more of the experts that I meet from around the world into a book like this, where we have a full book tour, we'll do uh, radio interviews on my show for Liberate Your Authentic Self on America Out Loud, uh, video interviews for here and, and YouTube and you know YouTube and Facebook and as you may have seen in one of my other lives um, Missy Crutchfield the co-founder of Gandhi's B magazine she's contributing her story and Missy is an activist she's a soul sister somebody I went with um, to Peru and we met up in Northern California last week to shoot footage for her new project that she's brought to me. We are co-producing Gaia Talks, The Earth Speaks. So Lorena, this might be a good thing for you as well when you're ready to give a Gaia Talk. And, uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm curious, Camilla and Lorena, sorry to go off on a tangent on Denmark, y'all, but I was just talking with Jeanette who was telling me about a place, let's see if I can look it up because I probably will not be able to pronounce it, so somebody's gonna have to pronounce it for me. Um, Jeanette was telling me about Vade, okay, yeah, you can forget about it, Vade Hafsentret. Do you know what I'm talking about? Some place where you can walk on water in the south of Denmark? <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't pronounce it. Um, but anyway, so Jeanette was just telling me about that. But <clears throat> uh, Gaia Talks, The Earth Speaks, Missy Crutchfield. Missy has also been working with Arun Gandhi. So Gandhi's grandson, Arun, um, has been working with Missy and uh, Missy's uh, partner in empowerment, Melissa Turner, at the Gandhi Global Center for Peace. And they are publishing some of Arun's books and Gandhi's works, and she is sharing her story in Time to Rise, and she is offering every author in our book um, a prominent platform on Gandhi's B Magazine. So bmagazine.org will be featuring the stories of our authors. So this is a huge, huge way for people to share their truth and get their message out to the world, which can help your business, it can help your brand, of course, it's all the marketing uh, included, but it, it's a wonderful affirmation for you to be able to speak your truth share it in a powerful way with the love and support of my community, my tribe, and, and my network. So that's what we're looking for. So thank you, Camilla, for being willing to share that with some people. So Lorena, you don't know what I'm talking about either, probably because my Danish needs brushing up. I'll have to share the link with you and, you know, somebody will have to, I'll have to ask Jeanette or one of you guys to, uh... here, I'm going to send it to you to teach me how to pronounce this properly. 
Anyway, so Gaia talks, the earth speaks. So Vaughn, you say you walk on water every time you're in the shower. It's an awesome experience. Yeah, good. Glad to know that uh, I won't be the only one walking on water in this lifetime. Um, but it's true, you know, it's one of those things that I, I always believed, even growing up as crazy as it sounds. Um, I grew up in a household where, you know, we went to church, uh, not always together as a family. Um, what's up, Stieg? But I went to church, you know, and I believed what, what the Bible said. And I believed that if, you know, Jesus said, all of these gifts that I have, you will have, and even more. All the things that Jesus claimed he was doing, we would have the ability to do. And I just believed it. It's like, okay, so we can turn water to wine, walk on water, you know, multiply the fishes and the loaves to feed people. We can heal people. Um, I've always believed that we had these supernatural powers. Now, I will attribute some of that belief to my mom. Um, my mother's from British Guyana, you know, sort of a Caribbean vibe there. And so the belief in spirituality and magic and psychic powers and spirits, that was a part of their culture. So I guess I never felt weird for any of my spiritual stuff, like the belief in magic and being able to use the power of the mind. Um, that was just a natural part of my life. And being able to use the mind to bring control uh, to the body for example, or to even heal the body or transform the body. Um, like, like you, Stig, you teach people through, you know, breathology, or is it breathology? Um, long time no see, keep walking on water and swim in the ocean. Yes, so Stig is the world record holder for breath holding, what, 22 minutes or something crazy? But all the things that we think would be crazy, you know, people like Stieg and the other people in my world, we're showing you that it's mind over matter. And with the power of your mind and your psychology, there's nothing on this earth that you couldn't do. Because the quote unquote rules that govern earth, like gravity, for example, those, are only, those can be superseded. You know, if you tap into the laws of the universe and, you know, one of the laws of the universe is that your higher self or your spirit, sovereign spirit, whatever name you want to attach to it, that part of you that is an offshoot from the divine consciousness, God, source, whatever you call it, that is all powerful, all knowing and um, omnipresent. And that higher self, that spiritual side of you, can go outside of the laws of planet Earth when you tap into the laws of the universe. Which means that, I mean, Stieg, you've probably seen people who can levitate, right? And not just people who are floating in a salt bath. But if these yogis can practice um, their meditation or their yogic practices and be able to levitate, well, that means we all have that power. Now, I'm not saying everybody wants to spend all this time in meditation and study, but at least let's get your health in check. Use the power of your mind. Use the potential, the infinite potential of your spirit to overcome the drama and trauma of this life and even maybe some past life karma so that the real you can shine through. And you don't have to be caught up in all of these health challenges and psychological challenges if you're willing to have that rebirth if you're willing to let go of the old those old paradigms those old belief systems some of those old peeps that are just never going to get on board with supporting you find your new community find a community of people who will love and support you and believe that what you see in your heart what you're inspired to do from within is possible Am I making sense or am I just r ranting and raving to myself on a Monday? Yeah, I know. I'm ranting and raving to myself on a Monday. What's up, Monica? Good to see your face in the place. Well, my friends, uh, hey, I'm willing to take some questions if you have them.
thank you Camilla for letting me know you're still here and that the internet is working. I will be so glad when we get some fiber optic out here to the countryside. It's just, cause I'd really like to like broadcast from the, the laptop again, but you know, with my big HD camera, it just doesn't work. So any questions, my loves, my friends, any questions about anything? Letting go of family, the book, my craziness, anybody, uh, I don't know, what's on your mind? If not, you know, I will let you go. I will not take up any more precious moments of your life today. <laughs> I'm going to get myself ready for my next couple of interviews. Uh, you will see me posting later today um, the interview that I did. I promised you on Friday that I would share information on Helen Ribello. She is a very dear friend and colleague who is crowdfunding her new book, The Magical Unfolding. And we did a, a nice in-depth interview, really being truth, truthful and honest and open about our weirdness. And that interview um, will go live today. And on Wednesday, you can hear it live on the radio in America. And of course, streaming live online using the America Out Loud talk radio app. So I'm really excited about what Helen's doing because the magical unfolding in her, her eight, eight step process um, really closely mirrors what I've done in my own life. And so it took me how many decades to finally like love and accept myself and really be fully grounded in who I am. And even this year I've like grown um, and, and stepped it up a notch in terms of my spiritual evolution. So imagine if you had some help. Um, that's what these books can do. You know, all of the resources are actually inside of us, right? Like it's all in you, but sometimes you got to get past some of the old programming that makes you think that you're not smart enough, good enough, lovable enough, um, or that you've got to go look for some guru or some process. There really should be no one in between you and your divine self. No priest, no rabbi. I'm not saying that religion isn't good if, if yours is working for you, but uh, you're meant to have that divine connection all on your own. And yes, get the spiritual teaching so that you're continuing to grow, but you don't need a go-between. You don't need somebody to go out there and work out your salvation. It's done. I did not mean to go off in this direction. Don't know what happened to me there. <laughs> Sorry, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I didn't completely piss y'all off. What's up, Jess? It's good to see you. Aloha, aloha to you. Um, yeah, that was a little bit of a tangent. So my friends, um, I'm just sending you tons and tons of love. So tap into the wonderful wisdom in, of this community. Share your questions. If you've got something kick-ass going on that you want me to share with the world, well, I'm happy to do that as well. You know, it's all about love up in here. All about the love. So uh, what are you going to do this week? It's Monday. What are you committed to? What are you committed to exploring or letting go of or embracing? Are you willing to put anything out on the line? If you are, type it in. Let me know. Like, I'm going to put you on Front Street. I know, some of my Scandinavians have no idea what that means. Oh, I see, I've been missing, <laughs> missing some of these comments. Yes, you can just write me a, a private message. You have my email, Camilla. You even have me on WhatsApp, I think. So go ahead and um, send me any information on other authors that you think would be a great contribution to our collaborative book project, Time to Rise. And hopefully I'll at least have a mock-up, one of the proofs, uh, for the book when I come to Copenhagen in November. Won't that be exciting? Ha ha. So my friends, um, that's it. That's it for me. Much love to you. I wish you a fabulous and wonderful week full of blessings. Um, I hope that you will commit to do something, something that is all about you. Okay, Jess says you're committed to preparing for 
your first stock on stage. Ooh, congratulations, Jess, with almost 800 peeps. Rock it, girlfriend. Rock it. Just bring your heart. And uh, yeah, you should remember um, something that I heard from, from our friend Steiner, Steiner Dietlifsen, who hosts the European Transformational Teacher Gathering in Alicante, Spain. He teaches something called, oh gosh, heart power. Come on, you, some of you, my, my Scandinavian peeps, you've taken his course. Anyway, he talks about really either going into the space physically where you're going to give your talk, Jess, or you can even do it just mentally and just literally beam energy and love from your heart to the seats of each of the people who will be in your talk. And one of the things I like to do is just to invite my divine self to connect with the souls of the individuals or the spirit or the heart of the individuals who are going to be there so that they are open to hear and receive. And I remain open to make sure that I bring forth whatever message they actually need. Because, you know, I'm a planner. I will work out my speech, you know. my Oops. My, um... My TED Talks and all my, my presentations will be well scripted because that's just how I roll. But I also like to be leaving open um, room for the divine. Like half the time when I get your comments and y'all are like, oh, this, this live was just so on point. It's just what I needed. I'm like, it must be because I did not plan on saying any of that. <laughs> so I'm just reminding you that it's a good idea to remain open to the spirit, the spirit of God, or whatever you want to call it. So Vaughn says, let's plan a cruise, a seven-day empowerment sessions. Mm-hmm, there you go. I would be happy to do that. You know, I did that. I don't know if you've ever heard of the people NPN, National Professionals Network, with Dr. Tedford. Actually, I have to, like, give... Thanks to Dr. T, as we call him. Uh, Dr. William Tedford created something called NPN, and they did cruises. Um, they still do cruises all over the place. And it was a cruise that I was booked for in 2010 that led me here to the Riviera where I had my spiritual awakening. Not 2010, 2005. Um, and it's because of that cruise that I met the beautiful Maricel, who is the the Latin Queen of Soul. So yeah, I would be very open to doing um, a cruise and doing seven, you know, I don't know if it'd be seven days of empowerment sessions, um, but I've done that before and I actually enjoyed it because you cruise on the ship, you have your lessons while you're out at sea or your sessions, and then you dock and you go and you visit some little islands or some other places. Um, so Vaughn, you know, get on the good foot. Send a message to Dr. T. He's been talking about having me back, but... I've been a little busy, as I guess you can see. So, Jess, I hope that that was helpful for you. Um, and yeah, I love speaking. That's why I'm doing Speak from the Heart. So Jess, if you want to come out of Hawaii, over here, meet us up in London. I'm doing Speak from the Heart, uh, a speaker training in London, October 28th and 29th. And for those of you on the VIP track, coming in Friday, we also have um, a special guest on Saturday, Derry Fluellen Davies, who's presenting. So anyway, I, I love teaching, and that was another thing that, you know, speaking about really owning who you are, um, it's funny that just looking back over my life, I've been a teacher and a coach since I was a kid, um, and helping people highlight their, their gifts and talents and share them with the world, putting on showcases, I've been doing it for over 20 years. So this is who I am, 100%. And now I just get to be this, this me, all day, every day, connecting with beautiful people like you, sharing the light and the love and the, you know, fairy dust. Well, speaking of fairies, um, I just have to share one last thing about uh, Melissa. Sorry, Missy. So I, I mentioned to you about Missy Crutchfield from Gandhi Global Center for Peace. I just got video back from Allison, who, um, who flew in to shoot with us. And Allison was like, Andrea, you have to see this video. Like, there's this fairy or something, some orb, this pink orb that appeared 
uh, as Missy was, we went to this um, Big Basin's Redwood Forest, which is um, in California. It's one of the largest collections of these ancient redwoods. Um, otherwise, you have to go further up north, you know, getting towards Oregon to see these ginormous, I mean, the size of these trees, it, it's, it'll blow your mind. So we were there with my daughter um, shooting these, these photos and these videos. And Missy, if you've ever seen any pictures, she's always got her arms outstretched, you know, praying and connecting with Mother Gaia. <laughs> and she was just kind of twirling around in the forest. And then this little pink orb appeared. And I think it was like a, a wood fairy. Um, so I've got to share the video because I'm like, oh my God, like no effects. It was just captured um, as we were there. Anyway, so that's enough. Um, and yes, the fairies. Hey, you know, this, this painting, um, which came from Iceland. Did you know in Iceland, they believe in fairies? Uh, and um, what do you call the other things? Uh, trolls. Like, they exist in Iceland and maybe other com com countries as well. But I've got a lot of people in my life who were tied into fairies and white witches and trolls and, and spiritual people who can walk on water and levitate and teleport. Yes, I said teleport. And even being in two places at once. What? That's right, y'all. I know. Just, I saved the mind blowing this for the end. So, hey, Malaika, haven't seen you in, what, 10 years? Oh, so Lorena, are you saying that fairies exist in uh, Denmark as well? Or are you saying trolls? Or are you saying white witches? Which, or all of the above, all of these mythical creatures, including people who walk on water and uh, teleport and walk through walls and heal. Yeah, it's that kind of Monday. Hey, Jeanette, I was just talking about you. You'll have to explain, Jeanette, this place that I cannot pronounce. Thank you for sending me the link. To the place where we can walk on water in uh, Lower Denmark. I, I was trying to explain to Lorena and Camilla, and I can't, I can't pronounce it. I'm not even going to try again. So you'll have to tell us where that is. But I look forward to seeing my beautiful um, Danish friends in Denmark. I believe the beautiful Helena Philipson will be hosting us at Lightworks, her place in Copenhagen so that we can do a little meet and greet, a little book signing, maybe a little, you know, I don't know, mother goddess energy fairy healing stuff. It's going to be a love fest for Women's Empowerment Day. So have an empowering week. Um, kick ass, Jess. Uh, as the French would say, merde. As we would say in English, break a leg. Do your magic on that stage. Um, Fabulous. So my friends, have a beautiful rest of your week. Please be in touch if you have anything juicy going on in your life. And if you have questions, I am open to answering them. Just send me an email or a private message. You can write to Dr. Andrea at AmericaOutloud.com and be sure to tune into my radio show every day. Did you know that you can listen to me every day on the America Out Loud app? It's true. Go to AmericaOutloud.com. There's a talk radio app, or you can go to my show page. Um, there's this, yeah, Vade have it. Thank you, Jeanette. On America Out Loud, if you click on any one of the menus, you can go to my show page for Liberate Your Authentic Self, or click on the expert page, and you'll see all of my past shows. But every day at 12 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. for us in Central Europe, 5 o'clock in the U.K., 4 o'clock in Iceland, and 9 a.m. for you, my dear friends, out in Cali and the Pacific Coast. I'm on every single day on America Out Loud, and that's where I share my woo-woo goodness as well as interviews with the most amazing people that I get to call friends and colleagues. And I bring them to you out of love and devotion to seeing you live a kick-ass out loud life. That's right. So, Jess... Do your talk and then send me a message and maybe we can interview you on my show. What do you think about that, baby? Yeah. All right, guys. I'm leaving. See you. Have a great week. Bye.